So let's talk about machine learning in JavaScript now that you know what this is all about. Currently, over 68% of professional developers use JavaScript in production. And we have over 51% of developers using Node.js as a primary framework in production too. Now, as you may have guessed, TensorFlow.js is an open source library for machine learning in JavaScript written by Google. And it actually started its life when Google researchers needed a way to visualize and use ML models in the browser, which led to the release of DeepLearn.js back in 2017, around one year after TensorFlow itself was born. This first incarnation was very low level mathematical library that allowed researchers to demonstrate simple models live in the browser, mostly for educational purposes. And you really needed to be an ML expert to use it at this time. It lacked the high level features that ML developers were used to working with that made creating new ML models more manageable. But its initial success proved there was a desire to use ML in JavaScript. As such, the need for a production quality JS library that was aligned with the original version of TensorFlow emerged, which led to the birth of TensorFlow.js in 2018. This version of the library added support for high level APIs that mimicked the popular Keras API for TensorFlow, making ML far more accessible in JavaScript from existing ML practitioners. This in turn led to a wave of ML researchers porting cutting edge models to the JavaScript ecosystem. And now TensorFlow.js is used by all sizes of company from startups to large multinationals and even individuals from academics to hobbyists who all embrace the unique benefits of using TensorFlow.js. In fact, using TensorFlow.js means developers can run machine learning anywhere that JavaScript can run, which is basically everywhere. This equates to zero install on billions of devices globally. You can just follow a link and it will work on almost any device. Here are all the environments we currently support. Common web browsers, server-side via Node.js, mobile native via React Native or progressive web apps, desktop native via Electron, and even IoT on devices like a Raspberry Pi via Node.js. Running client-side on device is just one advantage of using TensorFlow.js. And this is very different from using TensorFlow Python, which can only run on the server side. This, however, brings a unique set of challenges that you must consider, such as the types of devices that your model might run on. With server-side based ML, you have a fixed hardware setup that is known in advance, along with the expected performance of a model on that specific machine. When you run models on the client side on device, the hardware can change from user to user, which will affect the speed it can run and of course, the execution time of the model. Clearly, a five-year-old smartphone with a weak graphics processor will most likely run a given model slower than a current generation phone if you try and execute the model on the graphics processor of such a device. So let's take a moment to focus on how TensorFlow.js is structured to understand better how you can get the best performance from your models and clear up some of the terminology around the library itself. TensorFlow.js has two APIs you can work with. The first is our high-level layers API that's actually very similar to Keras, which for those of you new to the TensorFlow ecosystem is essentially an API that was made available in the Python form of TensorFlow that allows you to work at a much higher level when making custom ML models. So for those of you who have prior experience with this in Python, you'd feel very comfortable using this TensorFlow.js API. And for those of you who are new to all of this, there's no need to worry as you'll be focusing on using the TensorFlow.js APIs in this course, which we'll be teaching you later. Next, you have our low level ops API, which is more mathematical in nature that originates from our deeplearn.js beginnings. It enables you to go lower level, allowing you to do things like linear algebra to build pretty much anything you might want. And typically researchers will work at this level, creating new features for cutting edge machine learning research. In this introductory course, you'll spend most of your time working at the layers level when making custom models later on in the course. So here you can see how it all comes together. At the top, you have our pre-made models. These are built upon our layers API, which itself sits on top of the ops API. Now this then understands how to work within many different environments, such as the client side, which includes things like the web browser, for example. And each one of these environments can execute on a number of different backends. Now, by backend here, I do not mean server side. Backend in this context refers to the hardware on which it will be executed. So let's dive into backend in a little more detail. 
On the left, you have the CPU, which is always available. Essentially vanilla JavaScript, but it's the slowest form of execution running on the computer's processor. Now you also have WebAssembly for faster CPU execution with support for SIMD and multi-threading commands, which allow our smaller models to run extremely fast on the CPU, sometimes even matching GPU performance, that is on the graphics card, when running client-side in the browser. You then have WebGL that can leverage a graphics card or GPU, if you will, which supports 97.6% of devices out there. And yep, that means you can run on more than just NVIDIA GPUs. You can run on AMD and Intel too. So that means you can get great performance even on something like a MacBook that might not have an NVIDIA graphics card. And looking towards the future, we're seeing new web standards being formed, namely around WebNN and WebGPU, which we're also investigating to accelerate performance even further. And there's a similar story for server-side environments, which is provided by our Node.js version of TensorFlow.js. For those of you new to Node.js, you can think of it as a special version of JavaScript that's designed to run on the server side and has tighter integration with the operating system instead of the browser. Note here that our Node.js environment supports the same TensorFlow CPU and GPU bindings as Python has. In fact, both the Python and Node versions of TensorFlow are simply just wrappers around a C++ core that server-side TensorFlow is written in behind the scenes. This allows you to get the same or better performance than Python as you too can leverage the CUDA and AVX acceleration that's typically associated with the Python version of TensorFlow. But as JavaScript developers, you can also leverage the just-in-time compilation features of JavaScript in Node, which can lead to some great performance gains over Python when running on the server side. And we'll talk more about that later. Now, some folk you work with may prefer to use Python for the machine learning research. That, of course, is completely fine, and TensorFlow.js Node supports the ingestion of Keras and TensorFlow saved models directly within Node without any sort of conversion. And this is great as it allows Python developers to directly integrate with web teams that are most likely going to be using Node.js as their preferred server side framework of choice. Now, if you wish to execute Python models in the web browser, however, you can use our command line converter to convert to the format needed to run in the web browser. We'll cover this in more detail later in the course. So what's the performance like? As you can see here, executing a model named MobileNet v2, which is basically an image recognition model on both Python and Node with GPU acceleration leads to less than one millisecond of difference for raw execution time. However, if you've got a lot of pre-processing, which is the act of converting data into a form that the model can use as an input, or post-processing, which is the act of taking the output of a model and transforming it to something that's useful that you can use in your app, then Node.js can leverage the just-in-time compiler of JavaScript to see a significant boost in speed over Python. And here you can see how the company Hugging Face, who are very well known for their natural language processing models, converted their model known as Distillbert into Node.js. And this resulted into a two times performance boost over their Python equivalent. So if performance is top of mind, you might want to give Node.js a try, especially if your end goal is to expose a server-side web API for inference for which Node is very well suited. In summary, here are the benefits to using Node.js on the server side. First, you can use the TensorFlow saved model format without conversion. This in turn may enable you to run larger models than you can do on the client side. In some situations, it might not make sense to transfer a large model to the client side in the browser if it's gigabytes in size. Next, it allows you to code in just one language. And this is great for developers already using JavaScript. Currently, 68% of developers do use JS and that can enable code reuse across the stack which for a small startup can be very beneficial as your existing JavaScript developers can also deploy server-side ML models for you too, enabling you greater use cases for your business. And then we've got performance. As mentioned, our Node.js implementation talks to the same C++ bindings behind the scenes as Python does, so you'll get the same server-side hardware acceleration for both the CPU and the GPU. However, as mentioned, due to the just-in-time compiler in JavaScript, if your model requires pre or post-processing of data, you can get a performance boost in Node for that for free. And finally, as this course is primarily about machine learning in the browser, let's talk about client-side superpowers that can only be achieved by running in the web browser. First is privacy. As the model runs entirely on the client machine, 
no data is ever sent to a third-party server, maintaining data privacy for the end user. This is particularly important for industries where it might be a requirement not to transfer data to a third party. Not to mention growing concerns around privacy these days, and here you get the privacy for free with TensorFlow.js. Second is lower latency. As JavaScript has direct access to the device sensors, such as the microphone, camera, accelerometer, and more, there's no round trip time to the server to analyze that data. Now, latency to the server could be close to 100 milliseconds on, say, a mobile connection. And assuming zero latency for using the machine learning model itself, the maximum frames per second would cap out at about 10 frames per second if you're going to send images one by one, which is less than ideal. Now, with TensorFlow.js running on a device, you can go much faster than that. Next is cost. If there's no data sent to the server, you'll have less bandwidth and hardware server costs as there's no server-side CPU, GPU, and RAM that are needed to be hired for inference. This means you just have to pay for hosting of the website assets and model files, which is far cheaper than running a dedicated ML server all of the time. Or what about interactivity? WebTech was designed for the display of content agnostic to device type. From day one, it supported graphical content and has evolved to handle even richer formats like video, WebXR, WebGL, and more. As such, it has far more mature libraries for graphics and data viz versus other languages such as 3.js or d3.js, allowing you to code your ideas in hours instead of days or weeks. Finally, you've got the reach and scale of the web. Anyone, anywhere can link and load a web page and that machine learning will just work. Even zero install is required to do this. And of course, you get more eyes on your cutting edge research and see it used in novel ways across industries. Now let's head on to the next video to learn about the three ways you can use or create TensorFlow.js models using this library.